uh, what this is going to be our second episode uh, listing uh, it, scientific errors in the Quran. And uh, joining me with that, as usual, is Bogey, and we also have Nadir. And today we have uh, the apostate prophet. And uh, hello. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, uh, apostate prophet, uh, introduce yourself for anybody who might not know you. Uh, I am apostate prophet. <laughs> uh, I'm a YouTuber. I have a quite big growing channel on here. I'm an ex-Muslim. Uh, I do work concentrated mostly, almost exclusively on Islam and the criticism of Islam. Uh, yeah, that's that. That's it. Unless you have more questions. <laughs> no, uh, we're good. And then Nadir, remind everyone who you are. Sure. So my name is Nadir Ahmed. Um, I'm basically, you could say, a Muslim person who has had many debates. Um, <clears throat> I've also studied this issue of Quran and science, and I've looked very carefully at apostate prophets, 60 alleged scientific errors in the Quran, and and not just that, but as well as others, and I've come to the conclusion that there's no scientific errors in the Quran, rather it's a scientific miracle. So I look forward to having this discussion with you guys. Okay. I think I would categorize miracle as error, but that's okay. You know, the, the, the funny thing is, I want to say that just before we start, I, I, I usually say that um, that many Muslim apologists, especially not those Muslim apologists who are scholars on the subject, but rather those Muslim apologists who, you know, uh, have little knowledge and go online and to try to impress the, the masses with stuff like um, miracles and, uh, you know, wonderful Islam and stuff like that, usually uh, try to turn mistakes into miracles. I often say that. It's so, so it's quite funny that I come here and, uh, and Nader Ahmed does, does exactly that. But anyways. Well, let me respond to that, if I may. Well, first of all, <laughs> 95% of all my material online is actually debate material. Everything is what you see right here, where I invite critics of all from all different backgrounds to come and challenge my claims. In fact, I don't think I've given a lecture in 15 years. Seriously. <laughs> you know, so actually, I need to start doing exactly what you're talking about. So I just wanted to correct you. Uh, and that's why, you know, unlike, unlike uh, Islam... I mean, unlike Christianity, the Bible has many scientific er uh, scientific errors in, errors in it, and that's why people like David Wood, Sam Shimon, your friends, who are scared to death to talk to us and to come on the show and just talk about the scientific errors in the Bible, which we all know about. So, what you just said, uh, apostate prophet, you need to apply it to David Wood and Sam Shimon, who are ducking me because of what I did to Jay Smith. I gotta, I gotta throw in here you know, just a moment, Nadir. That you, you said apostate prophet was terrified of you, and that that's why yeah. he wasn't on the show. And he found out you said that, and now here he is. So probably would not be a good idea to boast how people are scared of you when they're clearly not. Well, no, I, I don't think that I'm going to take that, that claim back. I've sent. There's many people who came to you, and I think apostate prophet can probably. Uh, verify that who asked you come talk to me come talk to me and he responded back no I don't want to talk to Nadir because something like I heard he's a bad guy or something okay, like okay, that okay. So I've been trying well, to do this for me, a long time let me interrupt that for a second yeah. um, I've heard for the last two or three weeks that um, that there is someone called Nadir Ahmed who wants to uh, who wants to argue with with me with apostate prophets and he goes on claiming apparently that apostate prophet is scared of me and he runs away from me and this and that the first time I saw that you know I, I get such emails I don't know I don't I don't really I can't really respond to to all of them but uh, I got this specific email where I saw uh, Nadir Ahmed uh, is challenging you for a debate and the, my first thought was to be very very honest who the hell is Nadir Ahmed that was my first thought uh, I, I just want to. I just want to clearly say that my first reaction was, "Who the hell is Nadir Ahmed?" Uh, my second thought was, uh, if I don't even know who the hell Nadir Ahmed is, how come this guy called Nadir Ahmed is going on? Um, claiming that I was running away from him. I thought, so, so, so who is this guy? I, I looked a little bit into it and I, and I found out that um, that you had a debate or, or a discussion with David Wood before. David Wood is my friend. So I, uh, I was together with David Wood and I asked him, hey, who is this Nadir Ahmed guy? And he said, uh, oh, uh, I would just um, advise you to watch some uh, debates between me and him that, that I had. So I watched those debates and uh, it was quite funny because uh, there was there was nothing intellectual going on between David Wood and Nadir Ahmed in those debates. It was rather just uh, 
David Wood making his usual uh, hard-hitting points about Islam, and Nader Ahmed's coming with some conspiracy theory stuff. Yeah, I also have to add one other thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. What was my conspiracy theory you said you wanted to read? In the following, uh, af after that, I saw that from, from Nader Ahmed's side, there came a lot of uh, personal attacks and accusations like toward, what? toward David Wood and his uh, friend Sam Shimoon after a debate. Uh, so David Wood br briefly oh. told me, he, he, said, he said, that's how Nader Ahmed works. Usually no one has heard of him. Then he suddenly, uh, he suddenly appears with his name, makes accusations, uh, tells people that everyone was terrified of him, that everyone was afraid of him. Then uh, he's on the stage, he gets completely debunked and destroyed, and then he disappears, and then he comes to the surface again by claiming that people were afraid of him. So it's very, okay, unsurprising, can, it's very unsurprising to me to hear that what uh, word, let's, let's from the top. Please, like, please don't interrupt me. I, I, listen, I listened to your bullshit. Please don't interrupt me. Uh, so it's very unsurprising to me uh, to hear that Nadir Ahmed goes on some some un individual that I have never even heard of goes on saying that I was I was afraid of him. I was terrified of him. So I, I watched mm -hmm. the last uh, the last live stream on your channel, Aaron Ra. Thanks uh, for for having all these discussions. Anyway, I don't know how how you do that, but um, just give me a second. Sorry. I have a uh, an anxiety disorder, which is when I um, when I get a little bit worked up, I start uh, losing my concentration and my temper a little bit. So I'm I'm sorry for that, but um, yeah, I I came back and what I, what I saw there is that Nader Ahmed was calling me an online clown. So a clown. This, this, this guy, uh, sorry, online troll. This guy whom troll. I don't even, whom I don't even know or who doesn't even know with me, who has never conversed with me, was going ahead and calling me a troll. Which is very ironic because Nader Ahmed apparently gets all his attention by doing exactly by definition what an online troll does, which is to go online and to say provocative things in order to attract the attention of people. In, in this case of me, I still believe in a way that I made a mistake by even agreeing to have a conversation with Nader Ahmed. I would rather go ahead and have a discussion just with you, Aaron, and with all the other uh, friendly people on here who usually talk about on these subjects. I kind of feel like I have been provoked by a, a troll, by a clown, to come here and have this conversation, who has uh, done nothing but to insult me so far, but uh, which I find very, very ironic. So that said, I would, I would really not, not be, be interested in having uh, a, a normal conversation with someone who can't even have some basic respect to, uh, get toward an individual who disagrees with him. And who obviously has achieved much more with information than he did in, in so, over in over one and a half decade, as, as you just said. Can, can, can I respond so, to some of this? Uh, maybe you can. I don't know. I think I think I'm oh, I'm so far where done. You tie me up and just tell me to my face can, what a bad talk, guy I am. We can talk about okay. the scientific mistakes today. We can talk about this and that. Sure. Aaron will probably lead the discourse, but uh, that's all I wanted to uh, get off. For yeah, I, I would I would prefer. Can I can I respond to this, please? More. I would prefer that there not be any more, you know, uh, puffing up, right. you know, in confrontation. It, 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 see, please reply, uh, Nadir, yes. but let's 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 try not to make this personal. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to do that. And I think, you know, me and Aaron have had some very nice discussions. I think he can vouch that I did not trash him or anything like that. Um, you know, the only thing you got right is that I'm a nobody. That's true. I'm not, you know, as far as being some kind of another troll no everything i do is discussion discussion or debate if i if i can't find anybody to talk to then i'll do some kind of one you know on one video but i'm not going to trash you i'm not going to do anything all the everything you've said about me is not true you've never come talk to me personally we've never had a discussion and I and well, I think that, that, is, that is the entire please, point. Please don't interrupt me. Uh, no, no, uh, I, I I will interrupt you because you have no respect, and I have no respect for you after you have no respect for me. No, I will I say respect for that, that's that's the entire point. We had never had a discussion, and you and you kept talking about how I was uh, terrified of you and scared of you. Who the hell are okay. you? Who the okay. hell are okay, you? Look, look. Here's do what you, I'll do, do for you. Think, do you think I'm supposed to I'm, have some respect I'm for you after, after you go on for weeks okay. and, and talking in such a terrible way about me when I don't even know who you are? Okay, look, look. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry for calling you whatever. Or, or I think someone sent some email about saying that you're scared or something like that. Obviously, you're here. You say that. Obviously, you, you are. Okay. get that. <laughs> it's not someone sending uh, me. Well, one thing I will ask for is we got to... I let you rant on about me for five minutes, okay? And I just give me an opportunity to just respond, okay? Um, if for, for me accusing you of ducking me and now you're here, obviously, today, I take all that back. 
Okay, I think you're going to find that uh, a lot of the things you hear about me is not true. I'm actually, I think you're going to find me to be somewhat of a pleasant person. The first characterization you made about me that this Muslim apologists go around just making these claims, and that wasn't true. All, every, most 99% of what I do is debates. It's the people like Sam Shimon, David Wood. They're not going to come here to discuss the scientific errors of the Bible. They know, and for that matter, no Christian is going to because they know the Bible contradicts science. And that's hypocrisy. <clears throat> We're talking about the Quran and uh, uh, that Islam has all these scientific errors. They're making mockumentaries, but they know they got scientific errors in their book. That's dishonesty. That's what you need to confront them with. Okay, well, I don't, but I'm I here. That. As, uh, I thought the, the entire topic, the entire point is that discussing the yeah. scientific mistakes of the Quran. You attacked you me personally. <laughs> okay, and I'm just responding back. I'm a, I'm sorry for calling you uh, for ducking or coward, whatever. That's not true. Let's have a decent discussion. And let's not judge me because Sam Shimon or David Wood told you this, that Nadir is his boogeyman. Because it's not true, man. You never actually had a discussion with me. You don't know me personally. So let's bury the past. Okay, I would, I would like to just say, say something chapter, until we move and, on. And let's see if those actions, if, if any of that is even true. How does that end? Well, I would say, that should Hello? probably, probably be the final thing. Do you hear me? No, Hello? Do. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I, so let let, yeah. let the games begin. Is I guess what I'm trying to say. Go ahead. Well, the thing is, um, I am normally always ready to have a normal discussion with anyone. I mean, that's how everyone knows me. I don't go around. Um, I, although some think that I have such an antagonistic nature of work, I don't ever go around uh, trashing people. Go around talking trash about people, uh, making accusations, personally targeting people. I have never done that. I've always uh, done the opposite. Even when people have targeted me, when people have made videos about me or publications about me saying I was a prostitute, which happened, I said, "Hey, let's just sit down and, and prefer talking." You know, that's what I what I normally do. So I, do I I am that guy. You did the opposite, so and, and you did it insisting. No, no, no. I, I, which no, is no, which no. is why it's it's You're very hard for me, me to. Right, guys, just guys, gentlemen, let's if not I, make these accusations. What, whatever, whatever. Let's, let's, I'd like, let's move I'd, on. I'd like to put the the personal disputes down. I think I think both yeah. of you you, you said your piece there. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and I and I'd like to just get started. First of all, N Nadir, you mentioned that there are scientific errors in the Bible, and just to just to set the stage, how do we identify? Give me I'm an sorry, example I, I of a scientific error in the Bible. Yes, I can hear you. I think Nadir might Hello. have frozen. Uh, I can I can hear him. His camera's not working, but I can hear him. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm that, sorry, um, Aaron. You cut out there. I couldn't. I didn't hear what you said. All right. I'm sorry. Uh, you said that there were uh, scientific errors in the Bible. So, it, you know, since we're discussing scientific errors in the Quran, then I would just want to set the stage. Give me an example of a scientific error in the Bible, and how do we know that it is an error? Yes. So, and that was actually one of the miracles. Um, of the Quran is that the Quran actually corrects not just that there's scientific errors in the Bible but the Quran actually corrects it for example we see inside the Bible and this is I won't even give you the verse because it's just so Googleable that it says the mustard seed is the smallest seed you plant in the ground just type that into Google Bible and you'll get the verse we're but we familiar know with today, it that, that even well, what, in Jesus's time other farmers in his area at that time already knew of other seeds that were smaller. We get that. It is scientifically incorrect. It is not true. The mustard seed is not the smallest seed as the Bible falsely claims. So what is now, the correction? Oh, there's an the orchid the seed. The orchid seed is smaller. Yeah. So in last episode, when... Oh, I'm sorry. Now, when we go to the Quran, yeah. So now, when we go to the Quran, the and this is one question. And and so let me just respond to um, what Baraz was saying. Uh, when we go to the Quran, it also has the analogy of the mustard seed being the uh, being as I'm sorry, as small as a mustard seed. Now you would think, huh? Wait a second. Did the author of the Quran copy from the Bible? Because now we got two books, both of them having this analogy of the mustard seed being. A very small seed, but guess what's not in the Quran? You got it. The scientific error that the mustard seed is the smallest seed which you plant into the ground into the ground. That's not found inside the Quran. Uh, so now we can look at this, we can say, okay, maybe that was a coincidence, maybe he got lucky, but we're gonna see that luck will strike again. And we are joined by Mosin. I'm sorry that uh, the way that this uh, lays out, I didn't see that Mosin was waiting in the room for a couple of minutes. I think uh, Rada was probably in there too. 
So Hi. good to Hi, see everyone. you everyone. All right. Hello. So in, in the last episode, uh, using the example uh, that you just gave for the mustard seed, and I can think of many other errors in the, in the Bible, especially ones that are going to be relevant to what we're talking about now. I mean, we had the one where if you interpret it as saying water, uh, I've gotten a number of emails that said that that, that 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 sperm or semen is referred to in Arabic as a as a word that means water. There's a colloquialism that that, that, no, that refers to sperm right. as water. How you say it? I'm sorry. What you say it like the man's water, ma'arajan. Okay, gotcha. So in that in that verse we were talking about last time, whether it interprets it, it whether the interpretation is water. Uh, or sperm, or whether it was interpreted to be an embryo, as uh, as one apologist tried to make the excuse. In all three of those interpretations, the statement that it comes from between the backbone and the ribs is still incorrect. That's, that's scientifically erroneous. If you're going to argue that a mustard seed is actually larger than an orchid seed, and therefore the Bible has scientific errors, then you have to concede the Quran definitely has scientific errors because of that one example. That's that's not even talking about the other can, one. Can I respond? Ones. Yes. Can I respond? Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so actually that's scientifically correct. Well, first of all, let me back up and, and respond. And actually, I, I didn't get a chance to, to fully address the question last week. Sorry, that was my fault. So let me go ahead. And I did research it, and I did, and, I, and let me address that. Well, first of all, that's scientifically, scientifically correct. Um, the first mistake was, uh, and this was that inside the verse, Surah 86, something or another, which apostate prophet, you might want to make a correction. The verse there doesn't say sperm. It says water from between the back backbones and the ribs, which comes spurting out. Now, is that really accurate? Well, yeah, here's how. For example, if I were to look down on my body, first thing I'm going to see is my rib. Well, if you keep going down, you're going to come up to the bladder. Let me just stand up here and show you where my bladder is. You're not going to show me your bladder, are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like right here. It's something like right around here, okay? Okay. Uh, and so, um, and now on top of the bladder is a tube called the vas deferens. Okay, so at the moment of ejaculation, the seminal fluid goes up through the vas deferens and then down through, uh, it gets a uh, the the prostate uh, squirts stuff in it, and then it goes out the 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 the, the penis shaft. Mm -hmm. So the question is this: When you hit that vas deferens, now take a look around. What do you see? You see the backbone. So the description is actually correct. Now the second point here, and this well, is the question that, you asked. Except yeah. that we're comparing the 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 y axis and the x axis. And yeah, but it is case, between the backbone and the rib. That's an accurate description because it goes up through the vas deferens sitting on top of the bladder. Your vas deferens does not go between your backbone and your ribs. Oh, yeah, it is. It, I just I just showed you the trajectory. It goes right no, through your it rib. Isn't. You have to go okay. you have to go quite a bit higher in order to get between the ribs. Well, that's your interpretation. Backbone. Okay, well, when that, you, wait, 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 well, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. That, that's not, that's not an interpretation. That's uh, that's just uh, well, let's pull it up. That's just clearly wrong. Let's pull up where yes, the vas deferens. Like to see? And even if even if it were true, which we know mm -hmm. it's not, but even if it were true, then the, uh, the original point of of emergence before it goes into the vas deferens is still not in that location. Even if, if it goes through, even if it went through a tube that went around your collarbone, we still wouldn't be able to use that as an excuse because that's not where it comes from. Wait a second. Wait a second. I can only. Uh, Look, no, no, dear, just a second. Hold on, hold on. I, I can, wait, one I, second. I, I, time out, time I, out. No, 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 no time out here. I have a well rounded mind myself. I can I only debate one your... guy at a time. I can okay, only debate one guy at a time. Well, as a well rounded man myself, I don't yeah. see how your explanation could work. <laughs> well, here's what I can't do. I'm going to admit, here's what I can't do. And I, and I, and I talked to Aaron about this. I can't debate five guys at one time. I can't do it. But and it's I told only you one that, point. Okay. okay one, but I wait, one, wait, wait, wait. You guys are ganging up on me. Time out. Time out. I'm not ganging up. I'm one guy. You. I'm a one guy. I can only address our. Then I. Okay. I can't. I can't. I can't do this, guys. Please. And I and I did talk to you about this last time, Ara. And I can't do the gang ups. Okay. I can only do one guy. I'll respond back to you, and then I will take on the other person. He can shoot a question at me, and I'll respond back to them. But I can't do five against one. Okay, so now you said the vas deferens, the location of it is not 
you you cannot see the it's not by the backbone or something can you please repeat that because i just okay. i do have some let's imagine for a moment that the vas okay. deverens went all the way around your clavicle so that it went clear up into your chest and over okay. your clavicle and all the way back mm -hmm. down all right. and then you could argue which you cannot argue right now that the vas deverens goes between the backbone and rear because it just doesn't yeah. happen but even if we were well, to pretend affirming that it. it did even if we, we pr pr pretend that it did that's still not where it comes from it's it, it's running through the hose that's coming out of the spigot and then going back to the same place. It's you know it may even if it ran that way, which we know the Quran was not interpreted that way, was not written that way. That's not what it meant. Wait a second. You're saying it uh, okay? And I and the problem is I'm having a little bit hard time understanding your your objection. You're saying that it doesn't matter about the location. It's not where it comes from. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Even if the vas deferens did go between the, the backbone and ribs, which it does mm -hmm. not, but even if it did, you still wouldn't be able to use that excuse. There is because... no excuse you can use. That line is just wrong. There is. Well, no... you said. Okay, let's let, let's pull up the text over here, and we're talking about Surah eighty six, right? We could argue this point forever. You're not going to concede this point. I get that. It's it is wrong. You just oh. made a claim, Aaron, and I want to make sure it's right. Uh, you said that the text saying that this is where you say it does not come from the vas uh, from the vas deverin. Is that what you're saying? Or I, I I guess maybe I'm having first having a hard time. What is the nature of what you're claiming before I can so you know really yeah, repeat it? We, we were going to be talking about other errors today. We were going to be talking about you know starting okay. emerging from or... between. It says basically defik basically means uh, kind of like squirting out or something like that emerging so emerging. it says yeah 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 and so uh, word, wait um what's what's the ayah which sort of uh 86 7. See, this is one of those cases uh aaron or everyone this is one of those cases where uh if you look at apologetics regarding this uh this quran verse or regarding these two quran verses it's actually uh verse six and seven uh you find that there have been uh, so many explanations to uh, this specific incident this specific mistake in the quran over the last centuries they have tried to explain it by by saying that it has something to do with uh with how a human is, is initially formed like uh when a human is in the embryo in in the embryo state uh the place where semen uh is first produced is uh somewhere near the backbone and the, and the ribs or somewhere near the place where the backbone and the ribs will 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 later form and uh this this is still by the way one of the one of the apolo apologetics that are around which is which is complete nonsense you, you can't you can't possibly argue with something like that it, it doesn't make any sense that would be like saying that would be like saying I eat with my I eat with my with my butt, you know, because because uh, you know because somehow when I was when I was in the embryo state, uh, my mouth formed uh, somewhere where, where my where my butt was. But I can't really back this up just as well as I can't back up the claim that that semen was produced uh, between the backbones and the ribs when I was an embryo. But it's all just complicated talk. What it what it really means is that. Uh, what the Quran verse directly says is not wrong because this is actually right, but I can't really prove it because if I could prove it, I could possibly get an award for this. That, that's 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 the entire nature of of the apologetics surrounding this verse. It doesn't make any sense. You can't possibly follow it because there is no way to follow it. There is no way to 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 back this up. What the Quran verse says is very clear: the man was created from a fluid that uh, that emerges from between the backbones and ribs. This is something that people thought back in the day. It's simply yeah. not true. Okay, it's well, like they used to think that what, there was what, a colloquialism. That? Yes, there was a colloquialism that uh, that that the mustard seed was the smallest seed. They stayed. It was just a figure of speech that they had for a long time. That was the excuse that I heard in the Bible yeah, for yeah. how that's not really wrong. That was just a figure of speech that they used. You know, there's there's wrong wrong there. There. So, well, let me let me. Uh, it's first of all, let me wrong. respond to apostate prophet. Uh, 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 as I said, as I mentioned before, I can only do one guy at a time. So you said that this was something which was known to people at that time. They were like some ancient cults or something like that were basically knowing this. I would like to see a reference for that. I don't believe there's anything like that. But when we look at the text, what it says is yachriju, mean. And as we have our ex Arabic expert over here, it's from the word kharaja, meaning just going out. Yes. Coming out. And so... Uh, the whole 
uh, argument of Arun falls to pieces right here because he was saying that this is something like a point of, I, if I understand his argument, that this was a point of origin of the semen, which the Quran actually never claimed that. Now, responding back to you, uh, apostate prophet, what I would a encourage you to do is to remove all the layers of interpretation that people impose upon the text and just look at the text for itself. And we got an excellent Arabic expert, Rada, over here. She knows Arabic, speaks it fluently. She can help us all. And so she's going to help us wanna, with this text. I just have to throw in one other thing. I mean, I mean uh, Nadir, where does semen come from? Where does okay? So semen actually, the, it 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 first starts out as seminal fluid inside the testes. Then inside at the point the of ejaculation, testes. yes, are the seminal testes fluid. between the backbone and the ribs? Well, no, of course not. And and the vas deferens also never, never at any time does the semen get anywhere close to being between the backbone and the ribs. Now, if the Quran were accurate, if it were not in error, it would have said the testes. The fact that it says any other place means that it's wrong. That's actually that's it's, just wrong. The accuracy of the Quran, because this Does, goes back to well. Now let me respond to you. Uh, this this actually okay. shows the incredible what, what, accuracy of the Quran. Let me let me respond to you because what the Quran only said it doesn't say that this is originates. Yentemi, I think, is a good word for that. Is so that's what not would you use for originate? It's never. It never, yeah. it never gets. Okay, the, the whether, whether, okay guys, <laughs> one at a time. One at a time, please. <laughs> please you no can't get it one at a time. I'm Look, just this, whoa, is, whoa. this is so I, accurate. Guys, respond, it's missing the side <laughs> of the bar. <laughs> May I say something? Uh, I, th I believe Please, everybody here has said their piece about this. My, it seems to me that you're trying to figure out a way to make this verse work in any possible way. The vast deference doesn't even come anywhere close to the ribs. Nothing from the reproductive system. Yeah, sure. Let me show. Let me show it to you again. No. I'll show it to you again. You okay. I, no, 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 no. We don't want to see your reproductive system. <laughs> <laughs> I am looking at anatomy. I am looking at This actually works quite well, but the problem is you no, guys no, no, no. have a bad no, argument. No, okay, guys, no, guys, no, no, no gang up, please. Well, biology, what no, you are mentioning okay. right now, I am okay, so guys. happy. What you're okay, mentioning I, right now is incorrect biology. Okay. I sent in, in our in our private chat, I sent you pictures of what the reproductive male uh, the male mm -hmm. reproductive system looks like. At no sure. point at all. Does anything go above the ribs at mm -hmm. all? So no, I didn't say it's her? above the ribs. Okay. Yeah. Nothing, nothing mm -hmm. goes around the rib. Even if the guy is like in uh, in the fetal position, it still won't go above the ribs. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really sure how you can say that this, this is accurate. This is not accurate at all. There is nothing coming out between the ribs and the testes. Absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's now let me respond to that. Um, so... I basically uh, given you exactly how it works. And I given you, I and stood I up, I showed you. What, you guys, look, please don't interrupt me. Uh, okay, no, you listen. Can't Mr. Nadir, I can't if, you, if, you, if you. Correct. Whoa, this is gang up again. You have, okay. I'm not ganging up on you. I showed you what the anatomy of the male. Nadir, Nadir, you have to drop something. Whenever someone responds to you, is he walking away now? Neither. Whenever someone responds to you, you claim that, that they are ganging up on you, that they are interrupting you. It's, it's that's not the case. People are just responding to you. I'm not dealing with it if you're trying to make a point. Using the same argument that is incorrect. There, the the test the <laughs> vast deference does not go towards the ribs. So I'm not really sure how it's not. The picture is up there. All you have to do is open an anatomy book, Google it. It's not very difficult to see how it looks. It does not go up there. So how can you still, all you're doing, Nadir, is using the same argument that has been proven false to, but using like a different tone. That's not correct. You can't do that. Oh, okay, guys, listen, listen. I can't have everyone getting up on this. No, you, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't need to, you don't need to, to you don't need to, you don't need to have a speech. People are merely responding to you. Whenever okay. people no. respond to you, no, no, no. Whenever people respond to you in any way, you claim that they are ganging up on you, that they are interrupting you. Although you are interrupting people all the time when they are saying something. People because are not I'm being, people are not ganging up on you. People are okay. not attacking you. I haven't even spoken in 20 minutes, so. You just have to okay. sit there and, and have the discussion. I, you have the discussion. I, I can't have all these I mean, how? Me here. I mean, come on guys, please. Let's, let's try to be fair about this. I, I'm still trying to respond back to Arun's argument. 
And I, now I got to deal with Rada's argument. Now I got to deal with yours. I mean, I can't They're do it like this, guys. It's, okay. me, it okay. seems okay. Now I'm getting terrified. shouted down. Okay, come on, guys. It seems to me we're, we're, all, we're all saying okay. the same thing. This is thing. turning into pandemonium. Uh, you, okay. you, one, you can't just continue repeating everything you say, saying that this is, oh, no, um, let me show you the, how this is accurate and repeat the exact same thing that you said that we just told you is wrong. Okay, here's what I want. Here's what I want, here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. Okay, this started out as a challenge between me and apostate prophet. I would like to just keep it between me and him. Please, I can't do all you guys. Okay, why don't you, you came here to challenge me, right? Not to bring five against one. That's not what I, then I won't but take my word back happening. about you running from me. I don't I, want to talk to anyone I else I didn't other than apostate challenge. prophet. Okay, because I, I, and I did send this in an email to Aaron. I said, guys, I can't handle the gang up on me because I can't address all these points. Okay, so, it's not all these points. Wanna, it's one yeah. point. I'm being yeah, no. Three uh, people she brought up some other point. issues. She, I've got to address her links, which she posted for me. I can't do it. You don't do have it, to address dude. anything. Just, just yeah. understand. Oh, okay, guys, right? Please, the one at a time. It's the one. Uh, okay, I, I don't want to talk to anybody right now, other than apostate prophet. Okay. I'm sorry, sorry, you're on my show. That's what I'd like to do. It, okay, it's it's, it's interesting to me because you need to talk to him, but you're not going to exclude the rest of us, and we're not ganging up on you just because three people make the same point, and you have failed to address that one point, regardless who said it. Exactly. Each one of you is bringing up a little bit of extra, which I got to now address that. So I first got to get into the actual, the first argument, which which is I want to correct you on, Aaron. You said that you try to bring up an issue that semen originates. The word is originates. Um, and that's not in the Quran. That's not the, in the text of the Quran. That's your interpretation that you're imposing no upon the text. In and so no okay, I okay. can't get interrupted, guys, please. At I understand. No Understand yeah. that no point in the human in the male body is the semen ever in the location that the Quran says it is. At no point it's ever. Absolutely, okay, so now you're chanting. Okay, stop chanting for a second and I can address I'm not that. chanting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See, let, yeah. let me let me okay, say so something. Now, okay. now if, let if me address any, now the second any, argument. Does it really is the location correct? Now, now no. let me address that. No, one. it's not. Okay. No. Let me let me say okay. something. If okay. we read in, wait, if wait, Andrew, whoa, 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 if we read guys, in any I book, pandemonium again. I don't, I don't care, Nader. If we if we read in any book, if we read in no, I, any, no, in guys, any book no. ever in the world, uh, that, that that if it said something like he was created from a flute that comes from between backbones and ribs, we would never ever. We would never, neither, you wouldn't do that either, Nadir. None of us would ever go ahead and, and be like, well, it, it doesn't actually say it comes from uh, between the backbones and ribs. It actually means something different. And we just have to find out what it actually means and where it actually goes. Okay, we would so now never, respond, ever please. in any case say that. We are just doing this because it is the Quran. And we are doing this and we are trying to bend and misinterpret science. Because as Aaron said, as the others said, sperm never, ever finds itself anywhere near the backbones and drips. That just doesn't happen. Okay. So there, there is a blatant mistake here in the Quran. And if we want to uh, somehow make the Quran appear right from, a, from an Islamic apologetic position, we will do what you are trying to do, which is trying to reinterpret this verse. But it just mm -hmm. doesn't work. We can't possibly get out of this. Okay, now let me respond to that. So it, all I'm doing is rotating the torso, and I'm showing you from a point of view, from an angle, where it works quite well. So now as I will, and so the analogy or from, the, from, the, from the point of view which I presented, no one here was able to refute it and say, no, this doesn't make sense. I, sh I will repeat it one more time for you guys to refute, and you got to pick one guy to refute it. I would pre I'd prefer you apostate prophet, uh, but if Aaron wants to respond to you, that's fine. Now, here's how it works again. If you look down, you look, you're going to hit your rib, and it's going to go straight down to the bladder. Now, on top of the bladder is the vas deferens. Now, if you look around, you're going to see the backbone right there so is that an accurate description well yeah it does it's work. inaccurate you know why okay you wait a second why? you know why okay now why doesn't work you okay know why it's inaccurate because we yeah. are not transparent no it's worse than that <laughs> it's, it doesn't matter what a contortionist you are your you argument can't ever has get failed guys you, you, admit it doesn't work the whole the, the yeah, scientific yes, accuracy it doesn't is correct. Work. 
admit that your that your argument okay. does not work at no point ever, no matter what kind of a contortionist you are, you can't take your testicles and shove it in your belly button and somehow declare that that mm -hmm. is somehow gotten between the rib backbone and the ribs. It's just wrong. It was written by people who did not know that <laughs> semen comes from the testicles. That's all that proves that who, what other, whatever man wrote the Quran, obviously didn't know where semen came from. That's why he got it wrong. That's why all of those other references that we read last week also got wrong that where, where people come from, that it's only from semen and not from an egg because the people who wrote the Quran didn't know there was an egg, didn't know that there was a mix of things. The best that they knew was that you know, they could tear apart dead bodies and find a clot at some point. And so they assumed that that's what semen turned into because that's all they knew at the time. Now, the Quran is limited. To the, to the mindset of the people who wrote it. And that's just the problem. When it says something wrong, it's wrong. You have to admit that this is wrong because there's no point ever when semen gets between the back of the ribs. Sorry, it's wrong. Okay, so... Based on the last thing you just said... Oh, 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 oh. Guys, let me respond back. Let me respond to, to Aaron. So I just actually showed you... <laughs> let us show for the record for everybody who's watching this. I showed you how it actually does travel from between the backbone and the ribs now aaron's argument was it does it's not, not a, hold on guys no, please, right stop me. guys cannot please, do let that. me guys you, you can't okay. did that you would probably okay be dead. Whoa, whoa 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 guys neither, if i neither, interrupt neither, one more time neither, i'm done now there now there now there no 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 i'm not gonna you cannot gonna do you, cannot, you cannot keep on claiming that you made a scientifically accurate okay. point when you haven't done it <laughs> I've said something. No one has refuted what I've said because I don't expect your refutation, which means that I'm right. What, what, what the hell is no, that? This, this is what I don't understand. And I understand I why he's angry, why he's upset. But the thing is, he keeps saying the exact same thing over and over again. The vast deference does not at, at any point at all in the body go anywhere above. It, it doesn't the even body. enter. It doesn't even enter the, the, the what is it called? the the stomach cavity or whatever it's called it, it doesn't does. enter that well, what the heck is he talking about so i'm not really sure like you can't just keep claiming the same exact thing over and over again and say that well hey i'm telling you this is accurate why don't you believe it can i jump in real quick here yes, yes please um so i think uh let's not forget that uh, a person who's not a believer is supposed to look at all these things and be convinced of, of the divinity of God. And when we see that we have to go through such contortions and uh, literally, yes, <laughs> and warp logic, uh, how is it that it's going to convince a disbeliever is, is, is what I think now there is not understanding. And besides, I, uh, I was reading a paper about the where uh, Hamza Tsotsis was debunked on the on the embryology in the Quran. And then, so he gives an example of this linguistic uh, lexical analysis, if you will, that Nader uh, does all the time and uh, Islamic apologists in general. So think about Shakespeare's The Tempest, act one, scene two. There is a line which says, what seest thou else in the dark backward and abysm, uh, abysm of time? So, you know, it's, it's just like a poetic language, but now you can apply lexical analysis to this and say that um, Shakespeare was actually talking about the black holes because <laughs> the, word, the word dark, uh, the, the word dark it can mean dark, uh, you know, um, sorry, the uh, absence of light, night, it could be black, it could be, you know, it has a bunch of different meanings like absorbing more light. And the back word has meanings of slowness uh, towards a worse state you know, be pushed backward. And abysm has uh, a meaning of like the bottomless pit and etc. a void space. So it also ta talks about time dilation, in fact, you know, like how time is slowing down and how light is falling back into the into the black hole. So, you know, you can you can play this game ad infinitum. It's a Shakespearean miracle. But it's not just that. May not I just say about the when I when it, especially like the, the biggest thing about scientific miracles in the Quran is they always mention um, either uh, this this uh, I think it's Surah Irisse when they talk about uh, like, oh this talks about the black hole or whatever it is that they believe that it talks about. But they forget that there is another surah, um, Surah Najm, that speaks about 
the sky and the stars as if they as if they're nothing more than just lanterns. Yeah, I, I thought we were going to talk about uh, different scientific mistakes. Anyways, I think we have been we have we are very much stuck on this specific subject because we could just not finalize it. Explain one or two scientific mistakes, and that's it. You know, this is not accurate. Why should mm -hmm. we even bother? I mean, that's mm -hmm. essentially like a scientific method. You try to figure mm -hmm. out ways. Mister, uh, I, I have a I have a short there suggestion for Mister Nader. Yes. I have a short suggestion for you. I thank you for cooling down. Well, it's not take about cooling this, down. Take, I, I can't handle this. all you guys at one time. I, I know. We're tough on you. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I just need something take, fair. Yeah. The fair deal would be to take this answer to the anatomy professor in the university nearest to you, mm -hmm. rattle it off, and see if you get a, if you flunk it. No, we've actually done, okay. people have actually and, done and, that. And let, so that's let me good, tell you. I accept David, that challenge. You it, want to do it? It's okay because you're not going to be dissecting or performing any kind of surgery whoa, on anyone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're backing away from your but, challenge? I accept no, challenge. I'm not backing away from any I'll challenge. But if you say this <laughs> yeah. in, an anatomy, like. in an anatomy yeah. test, you flunk yeah. that test. Okay, so where I left off was, you know, um, Aaron's argument, testes, Semen comes from the testes, and therefore this is wrong. And so that's where I left off. And I would like to just kind of excuse myself at this point because I can't debate all you guys at one time. And really, you know, I need what I need is equal amount of time, and I need to only address one person at a time. That obviously, I mean, because obviously I'm on the defensive here, so I need really all I can, I can get here. And it, I, I can't. What I would like to do is maybe you and I, apostate prophet, can schedule a time where you and i can do a fair debate discussion two minutes back and forth i don't know we can make up some rules will you accept that challenge well it is why it is really just, we already scheduled it why don't you No, do dude, this now? is not fair i can't handle all you guys at one okay. time if 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 the three if we have three people make the same point and you they're not making the same point, point. We we all made exactly the same point with no variation or deviation. We all but made you exactly interrupted point. me. You interrupted. I was about. I got. I think I got thirty seconds off, and then somebody interrupted me, and then just took over. I'm like, come on, I can't get interrupted all the time. Okay, so we're. Gonna so there can't be no interruptions when I'm talking. We're giving scientific. We're talking about scientific errors in the Quran now. Beginning the uh, apostate prophets list, where he wanted to talk about the ones having to do with space and stars and moon and so forth, and and his number sixty. And I, I'm guessing counting down from there, if you want to start that way. Apostate prophet, I'm going to let you select whatever you like, but I mean you do have them numbered all there already. Well, I didn't even get a chance to respond to your false claim about the Quran. I, 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 that said that I didn't semen... make a false claim. Okay, well, you did, and I'm going to well, correct no, you if you don't interrupt me. Okay. okay, so the Quran, you, your argument, well, first of all, no one here was able to refute the claim uh, where I showed you. It is between the backbone and the ribs where it goes through the vast difference. You guys, I just got shot it down from like four or five different directions. And so let me tell you something. If I do miss a point, you claim, well, I did refute it. That ain't my fault. I cannot handle all these guys shooting, you know, uh, interrupting me and what one guy is saying this and that oh my god i gotta respond to him i gotta respond to her now i can't do that so all, if i slip up oh, 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 let me speak if i slip up and i don't address your point i got a good reason to all right so anyways now you said that because it didn't mention that semen comes from the testicle meaning this is like the origin of it the whole issue of origin is nowhere to be found in the text. The Where Quran did it need to be? doesn't say that. About all it says is yachriju. It just means it's kharaja uh, means comes out, goes through. That's kharaja. Yeah. That's what the word actually means. Therefore, it's a mute point, and your argument has been refuted over there. Except but what is amazing about this is verse? What is amazing about this verse is, but what is amazing about this verse is that. This answers your question, which actually I wasn't able to answer from last week, and I just did some research on this. You pointed out last week that in so many places of the Quran, it talks about semen, the word many. The word many is used here, there, and there. But in this verse, it uses the word water, because that's actually what the text says. Well, we now know from today from science that when it goes through the um, 
vas deferens, it's not semen yet. It's seminal fluid. And once it goes down and then the prostate <laughs> squeeze some stuff in there and then it goes out the, uh, the penis shaft, now you got semen. So the accuracy of not using the word semen and using water, and you'll find many translations which actually translated as fluid. It is very accurate. So the fact that it didn't use semen and used water is another scientific accuracy of that verse. Okay. And, and okay. the fact that okay. it never, ever goes into the place between the backbone and the ribs, never at any time, means that what the Quran said, however you interpret it, whether it's water, whether it's semen, whether it's an embryo, no matter what you interpret it to be, it's wrong. Okay. Every way to okay. Is, that's wrong. I, so let me respond not, to that. He, okay, not. what you are doing is just, this is, you are just, um, <laughs> repeating yourself thing never at any time it doesn't happen at yeah. any time but i just showed it to you well, now it you doesn't were supposed happen to... at any time hold on you, 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 you showed where the vast deference does oh, not no, never go to that no point. Interrupting. you are just nice. repeating yourself you are saying the same exact okay. thing and your I... argument has and failed I miserably said, here sure. because i demonstrated the of the male anatomy <laughs> why can't okay. you just look at the picture of the male anatomy and admit that yeah that doesn't yeah. happen I do have a picture. Would you like to see it? I, I have. I could give you. The I sent you three pictures. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let me let me address Aaron first, and then I'll address you. Okay. So Aaron said, "Let me re repeat." He says, "Never at any time does it go through this." Uh, well, I just showed it to you. So what you are doing is that you are just repeating yourself. You're hoping that if you just repeat the same failed argument enough times, it's gonna somehow some people are gonna believe it. But I, I, I but think the, that's actually what, what you're I've doing. I've given twice now. I've shown you the demonstration. Where you, you, you failed accurate. your demonstration oh, well, twice right. and are okay. still repeating Let's a failed demonstration. Let the audience decide what you <laughs> failed. Not it, not it. No, there, so can, now, can okay, who's the next? I gotta do Rada. Rada had an no, issue I, that anatomy is wrong. We're going for, on this forever. Can well, I please well, say I respond to Rada now. No, you're Rada, responding, you're okay. responding forever. I want him to look at the picture. Okay. I want him to look Here at the picture go. anatomy and tell me how on in what world, in what kind of species of human does the vast deference go towards the ribs? I'm, I'm no, sorry, what was your argument again? Ribs make something completely different. Could you repeat that? You're saying that the vast deference, you keep showing it like if I look at it from this point, of, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, okay, and, and when the Quran was written, you're just repeating, you're just basically you making know, attestations you know, you know, and affirmations. You, know, you are you have the exact same thing. I am showing you facts. Show it to I am not telling you, I, I just sent you the, the, the pictures. I am showing you fact. I am showing you anatomy. I'm not telling you from my point of view, if I were a male and I had a male reproductive system, if I looked down this way, I'm not doing that. Does he just go? Yep. Okay. Well, that is like saying uh, blood is pumped from between the two legs. And then, well, well, if you look from, from below, then it, then it makes sense because it is between the two legs. That's, that's just no, it, it, yeah, it but actually not transparent. It actually absolutely makes sense because human conscious, consciousness lives in the brain, right? So we have to look at things from the brain's perspective and then it lies between the rib and the backbone. I mean, you can make apologetics, like, <laughs> it's just funny, that's all. <laughs> Well, well, the, the, the thing is, the argument. thing is, what is happening here? Please, please. Now we haven't heard enough, I guess. Uh, what, what is happening here is that is that uh, is that Nadir is presenting an argument that, in no possible, in no rational way, by no common sense, makes any sense. No one would possibly accept this as a as a as a as, as an explanation that remotely makes any sense. Mm -hmm. We respond. Actually, many people. We respond uh, if you to, wait, we say, I accept that challenge. You said that nobody would accept this as an argument. Not Actually, not they're, not they're, not I, not yeah. you constantly complain. You constantly complaining about people yeah. interrupting you and ganging up on you. Yeah. Yet, whenever someone says something that you disagree with, mm -hmm. you immediately jump in and interrupt and start yelling over them. What? What? what, okay, what, what no, I apologize. No problem. Were Wait, you done? Well, I guess you will keep apologizing the entire the entire day, and we'll keep doing the same thing the entire day. Sorry about that. It's hard to do four of you these ones. You are presenting something that no one can possibly accept by mm -hmm. any rational common sense. Since no one accepts this. Whenever someone says, "Okay, this is not acceptable," you then you then go ahead and say, "Well, you are just not accepting it because I made a point that is true, and you cannot refute it. Refute it. End of discussion." And you want that to be accepted. When someone then says, "Well, that is just not true because you didn't make an actual point," then then you say, "Well, they are just not letting you go because they don't want to accept a, an accurate point that you made." You are just pro uh, projecting on everyone else here because you are exactly doing what you what you accuse everyone else of doing. 
you don't want to accept that your argument doesn't make any sense, that no one can possibly accept your argument, and that we should probably just move on like that. If you want the audience to decide, then just let the audience decide. S stay with, okay, I made a point and you don't accept it, and then let the audience decide. Don't keep on claiming that uh, that you made an irrefutable argument and that people are just angry right now because they couldn't refute you, because that's certainly not the case. Everyone is just annoyed by how much you repeat yourself on that. Okay, yeah, and I apologize for interrupting you. And again, doing four gangs run, sometimes you make those mistakes. But I would like to share my desktop here. Uh, Grada brought a beautiful picture of exactly what I'm talking about. And you're going to see that, uh, in fact, I, I, I'm going to actually save your links here because I'm going to use it for my presentations when I, when, I, when I get around over there. So let me see if I, if you, uh, let me see if I can uh, share my desktop over here real quick. Uh, and let's go, let's remember decision, allow. Uh, just give me one second here. Um, stream yard. Okay. Entire screen. Allow. <laughs> okay. So actually, I'm not able to share it. Uh, uh, Arun, could you um, could you share your desktop here? And and do you see the second link which she actually uh, posted over there? Could you please uh, click on that? Because um, I think it, it, it illustrates uh, exactly what I'm talking about, because she found a very good picture of where the Vaz Deverance is in relations to the backbone. Um, would you be able to be so kind to do that? All right, let me see if I can pull this up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see. How do I share my screen on this? And while you do that, um, let me respond to Apostate Prophet. Uh, you made the claim nobody will, has ever in the past or will ever accept this. I accept that challenge. No, I, I didn't say that. Okay, so you said people have accepted it now, right? I didn't say did, but He said, but no rational argument. Yeah, and, it's, well, and it's correct. Okay. Now, I'm trying to figure so, out how to, do, how to do the... Oh, here we go. Share screen. Yeah. All right. And, okay. Uh, and so, there we go. There is your image. Obviously, Muslim apologists who look for an excuse to somehow explain this Quranic uh, verse will accept such explanations. Although I never heard this explanation before, which is very surprising to me because I looked a lot into it. Uh, it's, it's actually not surprising to me. Um, I, I would rather explain this by how this argument looks very, very ridiculous, even to Islamic scholars, which is why I haven't really seen this accepted by masses of Islamic scholars. I usually only see different arguments, like okay. like, like it was between the backbones and ribs in the embryonic stage, which is almost as ridiculous as this. So you said it's the masses of Islamic scholars who are rejecting it. Is that what you're saying? I said I haven't biology. seen it. I mean, we, we, we know, had the Quran used the word for testes, then it would be, it would be good here. You, they, you know, they would show that they know, because that's the correct answer. To say that it comes from any other place is a wrong answer. And uh, that's what it says. And not only does it say some other place, it gives a place that we know it doesn't go, even through the vast deference. No, it, look at this. Look at the image you want to show. Please show this in your next demonstration and show how the ribs are above this image. They're not even in the picture. And yet we know that at no point does the semen ever come close to where the Quran says it is? Never. Okay. So now, let me respond to this. Wrong. If I may, can I respond to you? So the whole issue of where semen comes from, I believe I have already addressed. So now what needs to happen, Aaron, from your side, is you got to take my response of what I said of where it comes from, that whole issue, and you got to respond to that. We went into the meaning of the word kharaja, okay? And, and we have to d make the distinction of where it originates the whole issue of originates and kharaja meaning just to go out or something like that. You know, like, hey, I want to go leave the leave the house for a second. Kharajsu min al bayt, you know, something like that. I just left the house. So that's been addressed. I did show you, and I think the diagram is going to, if you, did you, were you able to share your desktop? I, I did. I, I, I got tired of looking at a giant penis on my screen. And so <laughs> okay. I, I minimized it. Okay, so I did not... I did not get a chance to look at that because uh, I let me let me try one last time, um, and um, let's see if I can share my desktop. I, I 
Uh, just give me one second here. Share screen. It's okay. We've seen the picture, and anybody can dig it up yeah. from the internet. Uh, so, no. Aaron, you mentioned that. Um, okay, because I'm mentioned... looking. Wait, wait, wait. Well, guys, let me let me just respond here. So, I'm looking at the Vaz Devrins over here. Okay, it's and right parallel, or you get what with it? Yeah, parallel is the backbone. I see it right there. So yeah, no, once we're again. The the ribs are up at the top again it's how right. you rotate so if you were to draw a line from the backbone to the ribs to be between the backbone and the ribs at no point would you include the tailbone which even if you did include the tailbone it would still be wrong even if you drew the diagram wrong putting all the wrong all, all the wrong lines in the wrong places it's still wrong there's no uh, way to save still this wrong, still wrong, still wrong. Okay. we're, we're so going to I, have I, to I'm get gonna... past this nadir because we yeah. have a whole lot of other errors okay, to discuss. To the, we, we, we said all that we have said on this let's go to the next one let's go okay apostate profit it's your game my game yep your list well i have a i have a huge list of uh 60 scientific mistakes i believe not that i mean, had, a, had a had a problem and we spent an hour talking about the recap of last week so we're not going to do all 60. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> he, he said that, that these 60 scientific mistakes or, uh, or most of them are actually scientific miracles. So, oh, stay, <laughs> just a second. Just to, just to clarify a point here. Is that 60 metric or imperial? <laughs> However you want to see it. No, but what does the Quran say about it? Is it metric or imperial? <laughs> No, no, the Quran does not say that. This is apostate prophets list. I yeah, this is, oh, this okay. is my list. So, it's my list. Yeah, I, 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 I was, I wasn't getting the point. I didn't okay. get the point. So, yeah, <laughs> neither this, this, metric this, nor is this it is, imperial. This is my list. My list of uh, sixty scientific uh, mistakes that I made. And Nadir Ahmed said that he apparently watched this, as uh, far as I understand. And that he has a, a problem with with these scientific mistakes, and that that most of these scientific mistakes are actually scientific miracles, which is uh, which comes to no surprise to me that claim at all. So um, I have several on these lists that I don't know what Nader Ahmed would like to discuss, but I think some of the very interesting things is how how stars fall down on the Earth, for example, which uh, which I am sure Nader Ahmed is very familiar with, which is uh, a Quran verse. Uh, in chapter 81, it's the second Quran verse, uh, which basically tells us that uh, that the stars will fall in the future. So when the stars will fall, that's basically what the, what the Quran says. The arguments surrounding that, the apologetics surrounding that are in, t in today's times, that this does not literally mean that the stars will fall, but that the stars will basically just uh, go out you know, lose their light or disperse. Although uh, over the last 1,400 years, the vast majority of Islamic scholars have basically just repeated what the Quran literally says, which is that the stars will fall somewhere in the, in the future. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I am sure Nadir Ahmed uh, finds this first pick very interesting and will tell us that this is a scientific miracle. So please go ahead, Nadir. Yeah, so if you read the context of the verse, it's actually talking about the Day of Judgment, when God basically destroys the universe. So, um, from a scientific point of view, this goes under the con this falls under the category of a, of a miracle, where God intervenes into this creation and disrupts, disrupts the natural process and decides to destroy or end the universe, and he can do so any way he wishes. Um, so the whole issue about whether stars lose their light and stuff like that, we don't even need to go there because this falls under the day of judgment and how God's going to destroy the world. So there's no, there is no uh, scientific error over there. I think you just forgot the context there. No, the the, the, the Quran literally says, as, uh, as 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 Islamic scholars have also accurately pointed out over this the over a millennium, that that the verse literally says, and the stars will fall. Yes. as in will fall down so what what exactly does this refer to this is obviously a mistake because the stars cannot fall not not, not by any time not today or by tomorrow or by the end of the world um assuming that such a thing will ever happen the stars can't fall there is no such thing as falling for the stars they can't fall into any direction they can't fall down as the quran says and um 
the, the Islamic consensus is even that the stars will fall down on the earth, which is impossible. The stars cannot fall down on the earth. The stars are giant, giant objects that are far bigger than the earth. And mm -hmm. the, the earth is, is, is next to them just a little little point, just a little ant. So what, what, what exactly does this Quran verse stand for? So the whole issue about, you know, just to correct you, there's no consensus as what you're saying, because if you talk to many scholars today, they'll point out that this is actually about the stars losing their lights. There's many articles which scholars have written on that. So the whole issue about consensus is, I just want to correct you on that as well. Um, the whole, this goes back to the kind of the concept of a definition of what a miracle is. So a apostate prophet, this is talking about God intervening into nature, into the natural world. And, dis and deciding to destroy the, the universe any way which he sees fit. So now when you ask, okay, well, how is God going to make stars fall when he decides to destroy the universe? Well, we don't know. It's kind of like asking the question, well, how did, how did Moses part the sea? Wait a second. Let me think about that. How did Moses part the sea? That doesn't make sense from a scientific point of view. That can't happen. Jesus walking on water. From a, from a scientific point of view, will not happen. So this is where there is actually an agreement between Sam Shimon, David Wood, and Nadir Ahmed. We all believe in miracles. We all believe in um, God intervening and doing these type of miracles. That so is, uh, you could go ahead. So I, what I would recommend for you, actually, there is a, this is really, it's not an issue of a, a science and Islam issue. This is more of a science and miracles debate, which is raging on, taking place, on the internet, I would ask, I would, I would ask that you kind of listen and follow some of those discussions, and so I don't see this as being really a relevant issue. It's a false equivalency that you brought up the uh, the walking on water or Moses uh, splitting the seas, because we're talking about uh, something that could literally happen, but we don't know how it happens, and 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 people interpret it as as a miracle. Others believe that uh, that it that it can't happen because miracles don't exist. In the case of the stars, we are talking about something that cannot physically happen. Uh, that, that just can't take place because it's 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 completely it is completely based on a false premise, which is that which is that stars are <coughs> up in the sky, they are up above, above us, and that stars could uh, possibly at some time in history uh, fall down on us, which is which 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 is false. Stars cannot fall down. It is not about how this happens. It is it is about the fact that this just simply cannot happen. We have, if we, we want to talk, conflict, about, we have a conflict of hypotheses here. Uh, the, the people who wrote the Bible made clear that what they were talking about was uh, a, a round disc uh, that was divided into four quadrants, sometimes mistranslated as corners, and it stood on columns. So basically we're talking about a round table, and the earth is a map on that table. And then the, 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 in the Bible, the, the earth is covered by a, a firmament, which is a giant crystal dome. And then inside the crystal dome are the sun and the moon, which are both the same size as each other, and they're both declared to be bigger than all the stars. And the stars are basically just tiny little things that are decorations within the expanse of the firmament. And these tiny little things that twinkle in, inside the expanse of the firmament can fall down. This is what their hypothesis was. The Quran is based largely on the Bible, and so they exactly. repeat this same error. Now, this same error was was not just in the Bible. It was It was in every Asian or Oriental religion at that time. Uh, through Hinduism and on into the Orient. So they, there was a common idea, this this tabletop earth with a crystal dome over it. And that's what it's talked about when it says the, the stars can't fall. But now okay. we know what a star is. And we know that the smallest star is way bigger than this planet. And it's not above this planet. There's no such, there's no sense of up or down. It would be impossible for a star to fall, even if you want to call it a miracle. Not even God could miracle stars falling under the earth. Okay, so let me respond to both of you now. I got two. I wasn't done. I wasn't done. Wait, Aaron, but, but uh, I, I got two people I got to respond to now. You don't so know, let me I, respond I, to. No, Aaron, 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 Aaron added his added his commentary on uh, what I was saying. I wasn't actually done. Uh, I, I was I was continuing about the consensus. The consensus uh, of of Islamic scholars. You mentioned that there is no such consensus. Mm -hmm. The consensus I would uh, base the consensus on the most popular. Uh, interpretations of the Quran. The most popular interpretation of the Quran is by far, if you ask anyone out there, 
uh, Tafsir Ibn Kathir, the, the, the interpretation of the Quran by Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir's interpretation of the Quran literally says on his commentary on uh, the specific Quran verse 81 uh, 2 and, and, the, and, and chapter uh, 82. It says that um, that according to interpretations by uh, the companions and by Arabi in Abnas uh, bin, bin Anas, that uh, the stars will lose their light and scatter and hurtle down towards the earth. If we look at another uh, interpretation of the Quran, which is uh, Tafsir al Jalalain, which is also very, very prominent, very much relied on, it says the same thing. It says, and when the stars scatter, when they are extinguished and hurtle down towards the earth. If we look at most interpretations, they all say the same thing until we arrive in, uh, in, in, in today's time in a few centuries before us and we suddenly see a rise of interpretations that doesn't that don't, that don't include hurtle down towards the earth anymore because it doesn't make sense but this is what the quran says and this is how islamic scholars have interpreted it forever and it's no surprise because it is based on the idea of the bible that stars are above in the sky as aaron pointed out it is based on multiple other quran verses that tell us uh that stars are an adornment in the sky that stars are small in the sky that stars are missiles in the sky that the sun is above us, that the, that the stars are above in seven heavens above us, and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me respond to all of that. <clears throat> so I actually have three different presentations I got to respond to now. And I apologize if I forget or miss some points here because there was a lot. So the issue you just said that the proper interpretation was scars, I'm sorry, stars which fall. But then you quoted Ibn Kathir stating that stars will lose their light. So you, <laughs> I'm not sure if you're understanding what you're saying here, but your own oh. citation refuted you. And this is exactly what we're trying to tell you. It could mean this, this falling. Is like, this is a very like dishonest it. discourse of discussion. Please, let me, no, no interrupt. You. I, I have a lot to respond to here, guys. No, Please no, I, 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 think, I, I think he said lose light sure. and fall down to the yeah. earth. So so guys, 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 listen, listen, listen exactly. to me. Please, allow me to allow me to continue. If I say something which you neither, don't like, neither. wait for me it's, to finish. It's not, it's not something okay. that I don't like. If you guys, make dishonest claims on, and accusations, let me if you just, make if you make if you lie uh, here on a debate, yeah. I can't I can't keep that going. Uh, I have okay. never said that they lose their but life. And that is the only thing. Yeah, let's let's not let's let's try not to accuse of lying. Yeah. I don't think that Nadir, that. I don't I don't think that Nadir understood that you that you were saying that it, that they would lose their light and fall. Because that's, that's the important thing. Both meanings are correct. So please, one thing I want to again, uh, you know, I, you first you went apostate prophet, then Arun went. And then you went again, and now I gotta respond to all that. And I know I'm gonna say things that you're not gonna like. I know I might even say things. Yes, I'm gonna quote lie. I'm gonna lie because it's hard to keep up with all three of you people here. Okay, okay. And I'm doing my best to keep up. But please yeah, understand no that if I misrepresent, if I misquote you, please be patient with me. Let me finish, <laughs> and then you can correct me. Okay. But anyways, let me get back to the point over here. Uh, so what I was about to say what before I got interrupted. Um, so both meanings are actually correct, that they're gonna lose their light or they can fall. Some say, some, some go either way. But see, I think the point which, uh, the whole thing about the Bible and how the Bible scientific errors, uh, that's nowhere found in the Quran. What you just described about this dome or something like that, uh, Aaron, that's nowhere found in the Quran. And this goes back to what I was saying about David Wood, Sam Shimon, and Christian Prince. They are scared to talk to me. And not just David, I don't care about David. Just talk okay, to I... me about the scientific errors in the Bible. Uh, Apostate Prophet, if you're honest, you should go to them. Hey, listen, I just talked to this guy named Nadir. And uh, he was open about talking about alleged scientific error in the Quran. Why don't you open up your religion and talk about the Bible? And so why don't we question Nadir. the issue about the mustard seed? Nadir. So I just want you to remember that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll, um, the, yeah. The, the firmament model, the, 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 the flat disc earth with the firmament over it is found in the Quran over and okay. over again. We'd and love I, to and see I've, that. And, flat I've made disc with and I have firmament. made, I have made references to okay. that in, in the, uh, in the, uh, the previous mm -hmm. series, you know, an infidel reads the Quran. Yes. <laughs> I found references to yep, that yep. model at, at least four Can times. we do that? Can we do that one next? If I would love to do, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, let's we, do the flat disc one next. I no, love that one. Okay, but see, that's that's also okay, guys. Let me finish what I was saying here. All right, okay. all right. 
So we, start... we do have that on the schedule, though, because I, I already yeah. did put that on the schedule so that we can do that one next time if you want to. OK, fine. So let me finish what I was saying here. Uh, see, the thing is, you're, you're having a hard time grasping what a miracle is. If we look at a star, first of all, the, the, the whole the science, which you are saying, which it contradicts, doesn't exist. OK, when you say stars don't fall. Well, what do you mean by that? Can stars lose their orbit? Yes, they can lose their orbit. And when you stars so when do you not make orbit. It, Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let me finish my point. Do not, please, guys. When you now you brought up a good point, Aaron, and this is what I will insist. When you say that stars do not orbit, and when you when you say, okay, Nadir, you made a claim of science which needs to be fact fact checked. Good. I gotta provide a reference for what I'm talking about. Okay, so let me go ahead and let me paste inside. Uh, the text over here, my reference. And I will ask that you do the same, okay, when you make a claim of science. So I'm quoting Universe Today here. It says, stars also have their own motion in space called proper motion. They orbit. <clears throat> they orbit. And therefore, it's possible to lose its orbit. So let me uh, paste for you my reference. So at any time when we make a claim of science, we got to back it up. And I've just put it for you inside the uh, inside the chat. But my point here, it's mute because... It doesn't matter. Let's let's hypothetically say stars are just fixed in the sky and they have no motion. Again, if you if you see something, you know, and, and then the Quran says, well, I'm going to come and do this in the day of judgment. This does not contradict science, because once again, this is God intervening into the universe, into the natural world and disrupting the way it works and then doing a miracle. So. Talk to David about this. He can explain it a lot better than I could. So that's why this can never contradict science. And we're wasting our time on miracle claims of the Quran when there's other other things which can be falsified, like that so-called disc baloney, which I was hearing today. Let's go to that because this is another dead argument, just like the backbone one. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No. So, so can, I, can I jump in on that real quick? Yes, please. So basically, basically all your arguments are around um, Quran has scientific miracles unless, until they don't. And when they do have contradiction with science, those are miracles. So basically, it's heads I win, tails you lose. You're never going to be able to lose in this situation. You have positioned yourself in a way that, okay, if you're not going, you're going to cherry pick the science basically, and that's how you positioned yourself. Yeah, okay, and I'll and respond to that. Oh, let me respond to that. Uh, no, you're wrong. There are many statements in the Quran which can be falsifiable. Like for example, in my last debate with Jay Smith. Um, they tried to corner me and because the Quran actually said that bees eat fruit from the Thamarat. Uh, and so there's a falsifiable statement. So I cannot fall back on the miracle stuff. No, no. The Quran is actually making a scientific claim over here. So you're so again, there no, are many I mean, statements. you can you can no, still you can don't interrupt me, guys. Let me let me respond. So there are many statements in the Quran which can be falsified and you cannot use the miracle clause. For example, and the same thing with the Bible, like, for example, if. If the Quran said that the mustard seed is the smallest seed that you plant in the ground, like the Bible says, then that's a falsifiable statement and you cannot fall back on the miracle claim. So there are many statements like that. And this is one of the great miracles of the Quran that <clears throat> both the book contains uh, this, this, this mustard seed ar argument, but the Quran doesn't repeat the scientific error of the Bible. And that's why Shimon and Wood are running from me because they know it's true. No, so 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 in case of bees, right? Uh, uh, imagine I'm an apologetic. Uh, uh, imagine I'm an apologist, and then you say like bees don't eat fruits, right? That's a falsifiable claim. But let's say we actually did find out that that bees don't eat fruit. Then you would have simply said like, okay, no, it's not talking about which species of bees eats fruit, or maybe you know like. Uh, uh, maybe during that time there were bees, or maybe God intervened so that bees could eat fruit. So you can you can you can just keep making up things and then uh, claim them as miracles. You know, like I don't think there's anything falsifiable in the so Quran, here, let alone the vagueness of it. Here's my promise for you: if uh, if you ever do demonstrate something like that, I won't and I won't will not offer you those type of. Uh, bogus excuses okay but First that's what all, you have you been are, offering hold on a second you should you should be well trained enough to take a, a false argument like you just said and tear it to pieces and if you don't got those skills you shouldn't be up here okay so you're asking me now to do your job because time and time again you guys are failing in producing any scientific miracles so now you're coming back to me saying oh dear how do i do this because the miracle are the talking about the 
it is silly to talk about the miracle claims of the Quran of what God is going to do. Say, oh, look, they're God, God takes science. That's silly. And now you guys find yourself in a bad situation and you don't know how to get your way out of it. So you're asking me for help. That's what's going Mr. on. Over Nadir, okay. Every claim of science. Hold on one just, second. Just, every just claim of no, science. I'm not waiting oh, for one more second. Okay. <laughs> no, you got to You have no, to let me finish. I, just like no, I just. No, I don't have to let finish. you finish. Because you don't have to let me finish. Okay. You're and, and, and it's all called accusations anyway. Ahead. We are not in a compromised position. You are. We're not. We have the thing that you're arguing that we don't. We can't. Where? God cannot. Me. God cannot miracle the stars to fall. Period. God can't do it. There's no way that God could take something that is 11 jillion miles across and make it fall onto an 8,000 mile wide Earth. It can't happen. Not even God can do that. You get that. Okay. So, uh, the, I, the that, is, that claim with, right the there, with your basically, premise, I can Nader claim is. victory of tonight's debate on that one claim. Now, I want to I want to repeat back what Aaron said. He said God cannot do it. He cannot even do something right. like that. So right. I know the Christians. I know the Jewish people. I know the people who do believe in theology, or or even <laughs> the atheists who come from a religious background. They're going to look at that and they're going to laugh at that. Okay, so I'm not even going to respond to that. I think. Uh, the uh, I will just let the audience decide for themselves where the yeah and know, that was just one lies. star that okay go ahead come star. up with that so flat let's, let's do that flat disc baloney go ahead so, let's do so that let's, one let's no no we're doing that next week okay what do you want to do because I have a long yeah. list for those and those those are the errors okay. that I found well actually yeah. they're related to the ones that that uh, that apostate prophet are going to bring some of them are tied into that so he he will actually probably be covering these first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the what was the next uh, alleged scientific error? I just I just want to make clear that if God cannot make one million mile wide sphere fall, literally fall, that can't happen to an eight thousand mile wide sphere. That that can't happen. But that was just one star to make the stars, eleven jillion stars, all fall on the no. That can't happen. Now that uh, that can only happen in the mindset of stars being smaller than the Earth, which we know is not true. That's that's if God was going to do it, it would still have to be with the, the stars being smaller than the Earth. Mr. Nadir, do you recognize this? Do you see what this is? Hello. You look. See frozen. He's frozen. Is he frozen? Yeah, if he appears to be. Oh, too bad. Do you have a apostate prophet? Do you have your your next item on the list ready? I can't hear you. Hmm. Might be some oh, internet issue. My, my mic was muted, sir. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he's he's probably gone. He might be back soon. Anyways, uh, I I wanted to say a few words to to Aaron Ra before he uh, before before we even continue the debate. But it, it is it re there really is no point to. I I really don't see the point in, in continuing the debate and the conduct that we have uh, taken so far because uh, Nadir Ahmed has a very very dirty conduct of 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 host of having this debate. You know, it's it's uh, increasingly hostile. It is constantly there are constantly these accusations, constantly these claims of I have refuted all of you, and you can't uh, do anything against me. You can't say anything against me, and I've 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 destroyed all of you. And yeah, that, it's, that's it's really, the part that's the part that bothers me. When he yeah, it's really he when he thinks that we're we're cowering or that we have failed or that we are embarrassed or that he or that we think we're in a bad position. He said that last week. Yeah, it, yeah. And like, no, he says like he wasn't going to let me off the hook. I'm like, I'm not the one on the hook. I'm the one pulling you into the damn boat. What? Yeah. <laughs> I need concise, clear argument. I don't need this schmizzle bangling of what? Yeah, the stars I mean, fall on, on a planet? Are you kidding me? I what, mean, what if one star today. hurtles towards the earth and, and just gobbles it up and burns it into ash, right? So, so that's, Nadir knows... That's what can happen. Nadir knows that stars are bigger than the Earth. Nadir I don't think he does. Don't. Aaron, I don't think he does. Well, the, the 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 point here is the the whole discussion is not about the Bible. You know, Nadir has a, has a has a thing that I have uh, seen when I watched some of his debates and videos after after I heard of him for the first time that he uh, constantly has to deflect. Uh, 
that he constantly has to take the argument to the Bible again for some reason. But you know, the argument is not about the Bible. I don't know. I don't know why that constantly comes up. It is not about the Bible. We're not talking about the Bible. We're talking about yeah. uh, the Quran. He. Uh, he seems to have said just uh, a few minutes ago that there might be some uh, falsifiable, falsifiable statements in the Quran. Although in the next moment he goes on saying that the Quran is completely miraculous and that that there might be that there is no mistake in the Quran at all. I no, really want to never concede to a falsifiable statement. I would really like to hear him say uh, if he thinks there is a falsifiable statement in the Quran or that there might be possibly a falsifiable statement in the Quran. And if he accepts that, if he accepts even the possibility of that, what does he do with it? What would, what would he do in response to that falsifiable argument? I really, I really want to, uh, want to hear him say that. I mean, if he I can't, think, I think what will come out of that exercise would be, he would come up with claims that are already scientifically verifiable and retrofit them sort of like, Hey, no, you know, this is falsifiable and science agrees mm -hmm. with it. So, you know, that's that's my that's my whole thing of the whole entire epistemology of this discussion is that um you're going to cherry pick the science that fits with the quran and then whatever doesn't fit you're just going to put it in the bucket of the miracle list and then secondly like yeah, remember when he first came to the show he said that even a fifth grader would be able to understand uh when he talks to people in jail uh it's not the case and even even the even the one that we were talking about today the where the sperm comes from there are different scholars that have different interpretation like ibn kathir in fact thinks like the 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 the, the rib is uh, the rib of the woman's chest so there's actually two parties involved here mm -hmm. you know there's the man's backbone and then oh, there's yeah. the woman's chest and then there's jalalain means something and then yusuf ali means something and these are people uh, uh who have spent their entire lives studying studying the quran and then they are the ones who are also disagreeing so you know at this point like quran is just a book which is so vague that you can actually make anything out of it um and that, that that's when you can dodge and you know like bob and weave the problem is things. exactly when you say that another amit suddenly jumps in and says well but the the bible on the other hand the bible makes these claims and the bible has even more problems well the discussion is not about the bible if you really want to go into into the bible then we, we could argue about how the bible is is in nature very different from the quran which is why you're making a completely false uh equivalency here in order to distract from the quran again but but I, we don't even need to argue about that because the because we're, we're not arguing the Bibles. I, I really want him to stop constantly bringing up the Bible. I don't what, know what is, why he's bringing it up. I, really I think it, it, so So uh, when I was an apologist for Islam, right, um, I used to follow mm -hmm. this course by Dr. Zakir Naik. So he had this online course um, where he used to teach people how to, how to learn these apologetics. And then, you know, so for example, women's treatment in Islam, they have this set... Uh, you know, like the section sort of like you have to just like learn these things and whenever someone argues, you just uh, blabber out these points. Um, so I think like maybe he's inspired by Dr. Zakir Naik where he constantly compares uh, the Bible. Of, he always brings up the Bible. So I think he comes from that school of apologetics. Possibly. It, it's it's interesting that we wanted to talk about uh, the dome in the Bible and the flat earth in the Bible because the same things do exist in the Quran, as you said, Aaron. Uh, I have a lot of uh, sources on that, resources on that. I dedicated an entire uh, five to, I don't know, 10 minutes on just presenting only uh, Quran verses about how the Quran clearly claims that the, that the earth was flat and that there was a dome above the earth through which there comes uh, water from from whatever is beyond the dome and the quran obviously has these claims the quran also says that um, that 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 allah's throne was above the waters and that uh, that the earth was basically created on the waters and all that all that kind of nonsense you know uh, but if, if you want to keep that for the next week i would be delighted to have that discussion specifically because that, that's a that's a really really interesting uh yeah. i, I would have, have liked i would have liked to have had an apologist on for that but if if your life's mission is to never admit the obvious reality when something when it is that obvious then, then obviously you, we can't have a discussion. We yeah. spent an hour still arguing on where sperm comes from. That, that yeah. was ridiculous. I'm a, yeah, I'm afraid he cannot admit, he cannot give an inch in this argument. I now, mean, in, the, in the other series we were doing, you know, uh, 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 An Infidel Reads the Quran, 
Nadir would be very useful in helping me to make sure that my under, my understanding or interpretation of the Quran is correct the, according yep. to their traditions of what they believe. I yep. would welcome having him for that because he's he's not going to be in the same situation where he has to argue with me. There would be no mm -hmm. argument. So yep. yeah. So is he gone now, or what is? What is I, I believe he's gone now, yeah. and I, I don't think he's coming back. So uh, there would there would be little point in in. We we can still have the discussion I, if you if you want to bring up like the the, the father thing. I, I, there was one thing that I wanted to mention for that that the, the that the Quran mentions that the Bible doesn't. On the flat Earth idea, they use the Quran says that mountains are essentially paperweights mm -hmm. on the on the map of the Earth. Mm -hmm. So, by the way, yes, um, the the discussion we just had, I think um, now there can uh, any apologist can actually just go back and look at it and say like, hey, look, the Quran was always right. These people will never believe. Nope, you no, know, no, dear is back. <laughs> yeah, oh, there you go. I don't know what happened. Um, hey, 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 guys. Yeah, uh, what, what um, happened? I, I think we might need to do this at another time because the internet in my house is is no more. Uh, well, wow. I've been actually using a hotspot because I think it's because of all the hurricane. Nobody wants to come out and give me <laughs> any internet. So could we, we might have to do this for next week. I'd, I'd be happy to. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let, and by that time, the internet will be, will be made, uh, I think, it's going to be working and something like that. So, Inshallah. Uh, and so I hope to see you again, Apostate <laughs> Prophet. And don't worry, I, I'm i not going to say anything bad about you or be mean or anything like that. No worries. I think you'll, you'll find that the rumors about me are not true. Um, so, yeah, let's let's just do this for next week. And I hope Sam and Sam Shimon and David Wood uh, would be honest enough to open up their books for scientific inquiry like we're doing with the Quran, and we'll be happy to do so. All right, so I'm just going to sign out, guys, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, see you, and thanks right. for coming back to us. So we, 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 we again, see, see, What was the entire uh, David Wooden's Bible, Sam Shimon thing about again? What? <laughs> I have no idea. I'm not even, yeah. So uh, are we good for uh, 5 p.m. Um, Greenwich time next Sunday? We should be, yeah. Okay. Yes. Happy to do Looks it again. Looks like a plan. Yep, and we'll we'll have some notes. Are we going to be talking about? Uh, are we going to talk about the the stars and planets thing again? Or, because we didn't do it today. Yeah, we couldn't really talk about it. I mean, we we could we could. I I think we could prepare the next uh, the next talk a little bit more, uh, a little bit better. For from my side, I could uh, present the points that I would like to argue to you, Aaron. You could have a look at that. You could tell me what you think about it, and we could just and, go and then maybe that. when we come to these discussions, or when when we come to these disputes, we could say, okay, well. We know that sperm comes from the testes, but the Quran does not say that, does it? It no. says something. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't it, say that. It doesn't. And and <laughs> I, I I I was I was actually going back and forth on this, and I was I was arriving to the un, unfortunate point of we were too charitable to call all those liquids semen <laughs> and go on with the argument that way. I don't know what's the point if this is where it goes okay well as far as being charitable let's uh, again let's not uh, let's not accuse of lying let's not you know let's just let's just, just try you to know we're not, we're, i'm not i'm not saying, I, I'm I'm sorry, I'm saying it, it is charitable for a modern day person to say all those liquids means something and then the quran knows that actually it is the semen that does the work <laughs> And it's in I, a form of a liquid. I'm, I'm sorry on my part. That. I'm sorry on yeah. my part. I was, I was, I came a little bit, uh, kind of angry. I prepare. I, I kind of, I was kind of prepared to be angry actually, into this discussion because of uh, the things I heard until until I joined the discussion with Nadir Ahmed. The things I I, I heard him saying about me. So uh, I might have been a little bit uh, angry with him today. I'll try to be a little bit more patient next time. <laughs> Oh, by the way, so yes, could you share the the topics that that you decide for next week uh, earlier, maybe on oh, Saturday sure. or something, so that we sure. can prepare. So yeah, we'll 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 make some notes. We'll have uh, let, let's let's gather like a half a dozen points, mm -hmm. or or if there's you know let's say I'm just saying a ballpark, yeah, you know, a half a dozen, two a dozen, something or something. Just remember that every one might be a prolonged discussion. And we'll just we'll have the the verses and the approved translations ready so we can read them out. 
Yeah, just in an order of sequence that you're going to discuss. And yeah, then last if, we, if, we we, did... if we get to all of them, then fine. If not, then we just discuss the top ones. Yeah, last one, we, of course, we, we talked about uh, everything that it said about, about sperm that seemed to be inaccurate. And then this time we're going to be doing uh, stars and planets or the Earth's relation to the, the cosmos and try to keep as concise number of, of related points there. I like to keep the related points hmm. whenever possible. Okay, okay. By the way, Aaron. Right. Um, yes. Uh, if if Nader Ahmed he brought it up so much, if he wants to have a, have a debate between between him and me, I don't want to uh, take this this program away and, and and turn it into that. If he wants to do that, if you want to arrange that, we could do that. We could do that separately, where we uh, just have a debate on the subject, scientific uh, mistakes or miracles in the Quran. I think it should be doable. I really I really don't know if I want to do that, but it should be doable. Uh, so. Yeah. Well, you you decide if you want to do that. I can host that on my channel mm -hmm. if, if if that's what you prefer. I, I would. I think it should be doable. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll we'll talk about that in uh, email later on, mm -hmm. and I'll go, I'll go ahead and close it up. And thank you, everybody. And uh, even though N Nadir is not here, thank you, Nadir, for for uh, taking part in all that. All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.